Hello everyone, welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul, and today I'm surrounded by video cards, which means it's a good day. It's been a few good days. I've actually been spending a lot of time with these cards, benchmarking them. Uh, but here today is my sort of review and assessment video of NVIDIA's newest GPUs, uh, which are the GTX 660, which I have a few of over here on my left, and the GTX 650, which I have a few of over here on my right. Uh, they're sort of the mid to low end range of the Kepler series of 600 series GPUs from NVIDIA. Um, and I've done a lot of benchmarks already, but uh, a couple cool things to point out. One is that we actually have a new GPU code name, so that's GK106. That is for the 660s over here. We also have GK107 for the 650s. If you're familiar, GK104 is the code name GPU that was used in the 680, the 670, and the 660 Ti. I'm going to talk a little bit about the GTX 660 first of all, and I just have the MSI Twin Frozer 3 version right here as a bit of a visual aid. So there's a few examples here of some retail versions of this card from the various manufacturers, and I've tested, uh, well, most of these cards. I didn't get a chance to do the PNY, but I've got all the other ones. We'll be going into those benchmarks in just a moment. But the GPU that's installed in these cards, which is right under there for this particular one, is the GK, GK106. It is a slightly pared down version of the GK104 that was introduced with the 680. Uh, still based on the 28 nanometer manufacturing process, codenamed Kepler from NVIDIA. Die size is down a little bit smaller, it's 221 square millimeters, and you have 960 CUDA cores, and those are distributed amongst five SMX units. SMX units are streaming multiprocessors, they're kind of the building block of the Kepler, Kepler architecture. And just to give you a point of reference, the GTX 680, when it launched based on the GK104 GPU, has 1,536 CUDA cores over eight SMX units, and they've sort of been reducing the number of SMX units per GPU as they've gone down the line from 680 to 670 to 660 Ti and so forth. But they still have given you a quite decent complement with the 660. Uh, apart from that, you also get by default two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory on a 192-bit memory interface running at 6,008 megahertz effective clock speed. Let's take a look at our testing hardware for these benchmarks. We are using an Intel Core i5-3570K processor, so it's fully PCI Express Gen 3 compliant. We're running it on an ASUS Maximus 5 Gene Z77 motherboard. We've got 8 gigabytes of G-Skill DDR3 memory installed, running at 2666, which is pretty fast for memory, but uh, well, there you have it. We also have a SanDisk MSATA 64 gigabyte SSD. Uh, power, for power, we're using an Antec High Current Pro 1200 watt, running everything on Windows 7 Ultimate 64-bit. And then also for our video cards, while we have the whole list there in front of you, you will note that I've also included the MSI GTX 660 Twin Frozer 3 SLI benchmark, so you can see how these perform in two-way SLI, which they are, of course, fully capable of. Uh, I've also thrown in some reference benchmarks, so we have an ASUS GTX 580 Direct CU2 in there, also testing against the NVIDIA GTX 660 Ti, that's the reference card, also the reference GTX 670, and the reference GTX 
Now that you guys have had a look at the 660 benchmarks, I did want to take a look at the cards themselves physically. A quick look, again, uh, you, we've got individual unboxing videos of all these available on our site, or at least available soon. Uh, I wanted to point out a couple things. First, the PNY card not included in the benchmark, so that bear in mind. I did want to show you guys the card itself, though. So here it is. Uh, also, we have a couple different styles of coolers. Now, you have the enclosed shroud style cooler, like you've got with the PNY and EVGA down here. This adheres more to the reference design from NVIDIA, has typically a shorter PCB, sort of a shroud extension that goes down in the end there for the fan itself. Blower fan ejects most of the air down this way. Now, you will notice in our tests, I was listing temperatures, and the ambient, by the way, is about 72 for just about all the uh, 72 degrees Fahrenheit, I should mention, for all of the tests that I was running, in case you guys are wondering. Uh, but another thing to point out is that uh, the shroud-style coolers tended to run hotter in the tests I was running. A couple different reasons for that. One is that a shroud-style cooler tends to eject more hot air out the back of the case via the vents here in the back, and they don't eject as much of it into your case. So a shroud-style cooler, generally speaking, will keep the rest of the components in your case a little bit cooler by doing that dedicated airflow out the back of the case rather than an open air design, such as the MSI right here, which is going to be ejecting air pretty much all different directions out into the case. That's not necessarily saying one is better than the other, but you sort of have to take an entire computer perspective when you're looking at it and comparing an open cooler to a shroud style cooler. Another thing I need to point out is that I was testing on an open air test bed. So basically I had the test bed sitting there, pop the card in, not in a case. And another thing about shroud style coolers is they do tend to be more effective in a case with proper airflow. So you have air moving over the actual blower fan here. That way it can suck in fresh air, blow out the warm air, and there you have it. Whereas the open air coolers like this in an open test bed, well, they got plenty of access to fresh air. So um, you'll notice that in my temperature results, all of these coolers well, they cooled really well. They're also custom design coolers. They generally feature heat pipes to help uh, aid the transference of the heat out into the fin array. They uh, seem to have slightly bigger fin arrays for the most part as well, such as the Gigabyte version that we have here. So that's also aiding in their cooling design. Uh, but there you have it. Just a quick look at all these. Some really cool custom designs from a lot of the board partners from NVIDIA. And uh, you have a lot to choose from right out of the gate here. Uh, am I forgetting something? I think I am. And of course, we can't forget that the GTX 650 is also launching today, along with the 660. Uh, now, this card is a very different card from the 660 in that it's a much more of an entry-level card from NVIDIA, but it's a great out-of-the-box experience, especially if you're just uh, building a system that is going to be used for lighter gaming, or you just need a bit of the adaptive performance, such as the ability to run multiple monitors out of the same card, because you can still push three monitors with a single GTX 650. I have a few different examples here. EVGA actually sent me up three different versions of their 650. Uh, we also got the Gigabyte and the MSI, so I went ahead and tested all of these, and I'm going to show you guys just some comparison numbers between them. Uh, but the GPU on this is the GK107. Again, a uh, little bit more cut down version of the GK104 than the GK106. It's in the 660. Uh, again, still 28 nanometer manufacturing process, uh, still the Kepler architecture. You still get uh, a lot of the higher end benefits from the 600 series, such as adaptive V-Sync. Uh, so you, you get all that good stuff. And look how tiny these cards can be. This is, again, EVGA's version right here. Super small and uh, definitely also stays nice and quiet and cool while it's running, I should say. Uh, it's really hard to get these cards up past mid-50s degrees Celsius when you're talking temperatures. Uh, the die size on the GPU is 118 square millimeters, and you get 384 CUDA cores in this one. That's uh, So essentially you get two SMX units and 16 raster units in this one. So uh, bear that in mind. Again, this is more of an entry-level card. You're not going to see quite the performance, especially at higher resolutions that you do with the 660. But I did want to share some benchmarks for this one as well. Also, before we go, I should point out that the uh, core clock on the reference version of this card is 1059 megahertz. A bunch of these are already overclocked, and we're seeing overclock speeds out of the box of these uh, 1100 to 1200 megahertz range. Also, the memory on this runs at 12, 1250 megahertz on a 128-bit bus, and there are 1 gigabyte and 2 gigabyte versions currently available.
that we've taken a look at the 650 benchmarks, I did also want to take a look at the cards themselves physically. Uh, on the left side here, my left, your right, uh, we got the EVGA and the Gigabyte version. You will note that these are roughly the same size. They use, using, uh, they're adhering more strictly to the NVIDIA uh, PCB design for these particular video cards, but they've gone with custom coolers, or at least partially custom coolers. Uh, and yeah, that, that's pretty much those cards. Cool that they uh, stay very short, they can fit a lot of different cases. You'll notice the MSI card here is actually a bit more towards the type of card size you would expect for maybe like a 660. That's because MSI has actually gone with a pretty unique little cooling solution here. You can push it on this bracket, slide the uh, fan out, and actually install a second fan. So it's got a bit of an adaptive design, pretty cool design from MSI. Um, but you can check out the individual video on this one if you want to. That's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. We hope you have enjoyed and learned a little bit more about these new video cards from NVIDIA as well as their performance. If you'd like to see individual unboxing uh, videos because uh, you'll give you a bit closer look at each card on a hardware level, you can check out our YouTube channel for that. We'll have those up, uh, if not right now, at least within the next few days from when this video is posted. Uh, also, benchmarks where applicable. Also, if you go over there, don't forget to subscribe because you will find whenever we do uh, more benchmarking videos like this, tutorial videos, as well as giveaway videos, which we like to do as often as we possibly can. So thanks a lot for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time on Newegg TV.